Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today I'll be making a guide actually on how to scrape an online store or uh, list of products on a website. So uh, this has been a requested video from some of you guys in there making comments uh, for me to do a guide on how to scrape using Puppeteer. So this is what I'll be doing today. Although the focus is going to be on a a basic online store, uh, no uh, login, authentication, and tricky part, just uh, some very basic uh, scraping of products. All right, so uh, here I create a little readme file to take you through the steps of how you would scrape a site. And uh, I have basically separated into two steps. First step being take a tour of the site with DevTools open. Uh, things we want to check is information, structure, uh, what kind of pagination do they use. And then jump into step two where we actually need to start off by grabbing the links for the different products. Uh, how to obtain these will depend on our pagination style of course. And then to the actual scraping part, like how do you write up that code uh, for the actual scraping. All right, so uh, let's uh, start with step one. And I'm just going to choose a random site since uh, that's why I didn't include the site's name in the title of this video since it doesn't really matter. You can choose any site really. Um, so let me just open up. So let me just open up Chrome here. All right. And then let's just find a site. So uh, the site that I'm going to choose. Uh, for this video, it's going to be this website, tesco.com. And uh, just a quick overview of this site. When we land on the landing page, we do have just a um, yeah short introduction here. Uh, but we want to get to the products, right? So we need to jump over here, click on shop groceries. And here we can see we have different categories here. Okay. So uh, I just want to... Initially, I want to scrape everything, but uh, I can just start off by scraping one category. So let that let's that be fresh foods, okay? And fresh foods are subdivided into more categories. I can just choose all in my case. I don't really care. And uh, now I'm on the product page here. All right. And the first thing that I want to check is. Uh, Kind of the structure here so it seems like it's showing 48 items uh, if I scroll down I can see that we definitely have some pagination here where it loads uh, 48 results per page okay so if I was interested in getting all of these uh, I would need to uh, have some kind of logic to um, click on this next button right okay we will just focus on getting uh, page one here for the very basic guide. So uh, no need to worry about that for now. All right. So the next step would be to open up DevTools here and uh, just try to select one of these items and uh, see if I can find it here. So it seems like uh, this product list list item is a product on the page here. So if I grab this class or even easier, if I right click and choose copy selector, uh, I can directly in the console just check how many elements we have here. So if I do document query, select all, copy paste in my selector here and I do the dot length, I can see I'm only getting one here. So I'm specifically selecting this item and I'm interested in all of them, right? So I'm just going to remove that last part where I specify um, which list item it is, okay? So 48 is the amount here. If I do a refresh here, right? If I do a refresh, and let's say I'm at the very top of the page, I'm just going to do this again to see it's still 48. If I scroll, scroll is still 48 so it doesn't load any more products as I'm scrolling the page so that's uh, pretty bulletproof 
On some sites, you will see that when you start scrolling, it will load in more elements. Uh, but specifically for this site, uh, that's not the case. All right, so this is the product overview. If I jump into an item here, you can see my URL changes up here. It has the ID here. All right, and then uh, in here, I can check off the information that I need. Is it here, right? So maybe I'm interested in the price. Maybe I'm interested in the name all the nutrition information. All right, if everything is here, uh, then I'm pretty good to go. For example, something like this, uh, the nutrition part, it could differ depending on the product. So in this case, I would maybe tempted to check out a few more products just to see if it's always the same table structure down here or if it's different. You know, there, there's definitely some things to check out. But just for this very basic guide, we're just gonna focus on the title and the title do seem to be here. And uh, it will also be a little odd if it wasn't there. Okay, so this is pretty much the start. Uh, it seems to be pretty straightforward for us. So um, let's open up VS Code and jump into our index file here. So I'm gonna be using Puppeteer for this job and um, so the first thing I do want to do is to add that puppeteer and I can do that by yarn add puppeteer. If I jump into package station, you can see I already pre-installed these packages, but uh, yeah, you should, uh, if you're using TypeScript as I am, you also want to be grabbing the types. So yarn add puppeteer and types, the types puppeteer. And since I'm using TypeScript, I also grab TS node and TypeScript itself. All right. So these four dependencies, and uh, you should be up and running with TypeScript. Uh, and uh, here I have my TS config, just very, very, very basic one here, pointing at the types for the Puppeteer project. Everything pretty simple. I will of course be posting the repo uh, this time in the description so we can check it out later. Anyway, let's jump into the action here and start off by doing some of the boiler page that's required for Puppeteer. So let's start off by importing everything from Puppeteer at the top here. Okay. Now I am using TypeScript, so uh, I need to do this in order to access my puppeteer.browser type here. So I'm getting some intelligence on this browser uh, variable. I like to, when I do a project like this, to have the uh, browser uh, variable global. But uh, yeah, whatever, whatever fits you. All right, then I like to create a main function in here, which is gonna be an asynchronous function. Oh, sorry. Uh, where we're calling the initial logic. And here I usually am launching my browser. So I'm gonna access Puppeteer, I'm gonna access launch. And in here I'm gonna do headless, set the headless one to false because I actually do want to see that browser to see what's going on. And uh, also, this is a kind of important note, uh, some websites don't act the same uh, with headless on compared to headless uh, off. And the reason for that is that they might have some mechanism in place to block a headless browser. Um, or some other things. Uh, definitely you want to try out both options whenever you're accessing a site because maybe you are running this script on a server and that server can't open a browser. Like there might be something there. Definitely some scenarios to consider. All right, default viewport. I'll just like in to put in that as well. Um, just to have just to make sure I'm not 
potentially accessing a yeah a mobile version of the site so I'm just gonna put in some some values there all right now let's jump back to our readme here so first step is to obtain the links so I want to obtain all the links for the products and uh, for that I'm gonna be creating a separate function for that okay and I'm just gonna call a function for gather links gather links Going to be an asynchronous function. Everything is going to be async more or less because we puppeteer to use uh, async await everywhere. So, all right. So, in here, let's define a page. To do that, we need to access the browser variable. And I made that one global so I can just right away access it. I don't need to pass it down. And here, I can add a new page. And uh, I want to go this page to go to the the page we we're just on. So if I jump back here, I'm in the overview right now. I can take this value, I can paste it right in here. All right. And uh, now I can start grabbing the links. So now, because now I'm on this page. All right. After this function calls, I'm on the page, and now I want to grab the links. And every time we want to do anything in Puppeteer, when accessing the DOM, we want to use this page.evaluate function. Okay. And uh, depending on the load of work you're going to do in here, I usually like to define a const here called dollar and then reference document query selector or query select all, in my case, query select all, and then just bind it to the document. And the reason for this is if I want to access this one, which is gonna be, or even just document query selector, uh, I might have to access a bunch of stuff in here, so having this shortcut can make the code a little nicer. In our case, it's not really needed, I just want to show it, show it off, basically. To maybe give you guys some ideas all right so uh, let's try to get uh, all those links so here I'm gonna create my selector and uh, I'm gonna call that dollar and then pass in my selector here now there's a very easy way to grab the selector here uh, we could just use this one that we used before just to make sure that it works let's just yeah, it just seems to be working quite well. <coughs> um, but um, if you think it's a little ugly, uh, you could figure it out yourself uh, just by looking into the DOM. But uh, I'm just gonna use this one for now since it uh, seems to be working quite well. All right. Now here I'm actually accessing an item, okay? I want to access that link, okay? So if I jump back here on an item, expand my dev tools a little bit, I can see that in here we have some divs, we have an anchor tag, and this is actually the anchor tag that I'm interested in. Now I can see here there's also an add button, which is also gonna be an anchor tag probably, uh, perhaps. So I need to be a little specific here uh, when um, yeah, when selecting this anchor, okay. And right now I can see that this anchor tag is just above the title content here. So uh, if I jump back into console here, uh, copy paste this one, and then try to access dot title content okay it's not giving me any results here. you can see it's empty so perhaps i did write it wrong it seems like it's not title content it's tile content okay so now i'm getting that div all right so another tip when you are Doing this type work, just stay inside the dev tools and uh, 
uh, make sure that your selectors are on point. All right. So in here, I could then select the anchor, but you can see I'm getting 193 results now, and that's because I'm selecting all the anchor tags below this tile content. But I just want the first anchor, so I could do I can use this arrow just to make sure I'm selecting that first one. And uh, I can just just to be 100% sure, I can do elf child one. So I'm in case there's another anchor just below tile content, I'm sure I'm just only selecting the first one. So this one, I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, I can jump into VS Code now and uh, put that in here. So uh, let's see. Yep. All right. Looking, looking good. Now this is gonna return a node list of all these anger tags. And um, I'm just in interested in the href, right? I want that link to the product. So if you jump back in here, I'm interested in this href property. So first I need to do a little conversion here so I can map it out <coughs> using the uh, array map function. So here I'm just gonna make a variable, call it mapped. I'm gonna call array and then from, and then passing my selector. Oh, this is not really a selector, it's like a node list actually. And after that has been converted to an array, I can call map. And then for each item here, which is gonna be a HTML anger element, I can return the item.href, okay? And then I am done here, I can return mapped. All right, let's see if we actually got those links and uh, we can do a test here by trying to log it out after this evaluate ran. So don't try to log inside here, do it after the evaluate, all right? And let's jump up here and make sure we actually call this gather links and make sure we also do an evade and make sure we also call main. Okay, let's just close down this one at the bottom. Oh, actually we need it, no. So let's call yarn start and see if we're getting the output we're expecting. It seems like I made a little mistake here. I shouldn't have this document query selector in my selector here. That's that's a little bit of a, a rough one, so <laughs> let's rerun it. All right, it seems like we're getting all the links here. Looking uh, pretty promising. Cool. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's jump back down here into our gather links function, make sure we are Closing that page after we used it, and then return our links. Okay. Now, now we have all our links. So now we just need to go visit those links and then grab whatever information we need. Okay. So up here, we have our links now. Now we need to loop over those links. Okay. So we can just do a casual follow for that one. So for cons link of links. <clears throat> for each link, we want to go to that link. But before we can do that, we need to have a page. So let's go outside here and then define your page by doing a wait on browser new page. Right. So now we can do uh, wait page go to, and then go to the link. Now after this function call, we are on that page. Okay. And we want to grab the title as the first thing. 
Now let's try to return that. So const title is going to be await page evaluate. Remember, every time we need to grab something from the DOM, uh, we might as well do an evaluate here. Now we can do our selector on the title. Mm, just going to call it title selector. <coughs> and uh, to find that, I could jump in here, click on one of these, right? Click on the title, click inspect. And uh, I could right click, copy the selector here, jump back into the code, go to the document query selector, and uh, you can see the selector is pretty long, and hmm, there's actually some dynamic classes here, it seems like so. Uh, I kind of want to strip some of this. Let's see. I probably only need the last bit here. The product details, tile, title, wrapper. Let's remove everything else. And just to confirm that this works, we can copy. Go here. Uh, do a document query selector. And see that this is still working. All right, that's looking a little more neat and probably the other one wouldn't work for all the detailed pages. So uh, if you do the copy selector from here, make sure you have a look at it to see if you think it would work every time. All right, so now when we're in here, we can do return title select. <clears throat> and I'm just going to add a question mark here because what if um, this selector <coughs> failed for some reason. We don't want our program to crash, right? And here I can do return title selector and that detects content. Cool. Now, I just want to go up here once again and then just create an, an array where we can gather all these titles. I'm just gonna call it titles. And then down here in our loop, I'm gonna push the title to the titles array. Very simple, right? Cool beans. Now um, let's try to log our titles to see if our little scraper did the work we wanted it to do. Let's run it. Close it down. Uh, you could also follow uh, what's happening in the browser to see. Uh, yeah, actually, it's going to open it here to see that it's changing the pages. So something is indeed working. It didn't log anything yet, but that will come when it's done with all the links, right? So let's just give it a little wait to see if we're getting out our titles. I might just jump back to see, yeah, there's still some, something going on. Hmm. Let's actually maybe make this a little smaller so we can get a better overview. All right, success team. Here are all the items. And uh, yeah, we are only getting that first page right so we could expand it the code a little more so we can grab all the products but uh, yeah as I said this might not be needed for all all uh, websites so um, yeah it's really situational but this is the very very basic and uh, I hope these steps and uh, the code make sense on how you would uh, yeah, grab uh, products from an external website. And uh, just a disclaimer, as always, when you are grabbing data from the internet, uh, make sure you are doing that 
uh, legally, right? Uh, don't steal content and post it on your own site, right? That's uh, that's not uh, that's not good. Okay. All right. I hope you guys learned something, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.